Hey guys, I wanted to talk about how you handle a bad review um, and particularly a bad review that is untrue, that is false, and that a renter left just to kind of get back at you for, the, for a certain type of situation. So for the first time I experienced this, um, right now I probably have close to 550 trips under my profile with my fleet of cars over the last roughly two and a half years. And this is the first time ever that I've gotten a bad review. I mean, I have almost 550 trips and they've all been 100% five-star reviews. So this was a very unique circumstance and the first time I ever experienced this, but I knew it was coming. So here's a quick synopsis of what happened during my trip and why I knew that this review was coming. So uh, really quick, it's Valentine's Day, it's about 8 p.m. Um, I knew I was gonna be out to dinner on Valentine's Day, so that's why I had adjusted um, my car settings to a three hour advance notice. So if you're booking, you can only book three hours out from the time that you're actually booking the vehicle. Um, and I knew that because I was gonna be at dinner, so I get a last minute booking coming in, it's 8 p.m., so the booking was made for 11 p.m. at LAX, so somebody that flew in. Um, um, so it was perfect, you know, I was winding down with dinner, um, so I knew I would have more than enough time to get the car washed and ready with a full tank of gas and get it over to LAX for the guests that just booked it. So this guy books my car, um, immediately he starts to message me like crazy, just message after message after message. Uh, he explained to me that while he was on the plane, the original car that he had booked on Turo unfortunately canceled on him, so he didn't find out till he had actually landed that his reservation had been canceled, which is a total bummer for the dude. Um, so he found my car and booked it, and um, so when he was messaging me, uh, he was saying, he was like, well, I really don't wanna wait three hours, I don't wanna be stuck here at the airport, and so I let him know, hey, you know what, I'm actually out to dinner right now, obviously it's Valentine's Day, and I also live about an hour away from LAX so you know it's gonna be close to 11 o'clock till I get there just because uh, the circumstance you know I'm just not readily available at that moment in time um, and he just wasn't having it he was super unhappy about that and so you know I kindly just told him I was like you know I'm so sorry I wish there was something I can do to get to you sooner um, but you know if you need to cancel your reservation and try to uh, find a car uh, somebody that has instant book and that can deliver within the hour you know that might be your better bet um, and then I also even suggested for him to maybe take an uber down the street go get some dinner go get a coffee you know there's you're in LA there's tons of things to do right next to the airport um, but he just did not like any of those options so I just told him you know I'm sorry but I'll keep you posted once I'm on my way and I'll see you at 11 o'clock just let me know if you're still at the airport or if you're anywhere nearby I'm more than happy to meet you there as well um, so after I sent those messages, then he began calling me and still continuing to message me, um, still kind of pushing along with the same message like, hey, can you hurry up? Can you get here any faster? So I already knew from the very beginning I got a really off vibe from this guy. You know, he wasn't the friendliest. He wasn't the nicest. So I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, just trying to think like, okay, that sucks. His car got canceled and he's stuck at the airport. I get it. You know, you definitely don't want that to happen to you while you're traveling. Um, um, but you know there was nothing I can do so he continued to message me and then finally I I felt bad and I was like okay you know what let me wrap up my dinner early so I can try to get to this guy a little bit sooner than 11 p.m. so I ended Valentine's dinner early I went home got the car ready and flew over to LAX um, I got there a little over 45 minutes prior to the start of his rental time and you know I we we kept all of our communication on the tour app which also is very important because when incidents happen and you have all that communication right there it makes it so much easier to deal with the incident or the situation at hand because all Turo has to do is look at the messaging see what happened and you know they can move forward from there so just a quick side note keep your communication on the app it just makes things so much easier um, so anyways I let the guy know hey I'm on my way I should get there a little bit earlier um, and you know he definitely wasn't thankful or you know like appreciative of that at least that's what I felt and he didn't express that either anyways I get to the airport hand off the car to him um, he was traveling with four other guests so there was five of them total handed off the car all was good to go and we're set didn't hear from him um, at all throughout the rest of the trip 
Then on the day of the return, his return was scheduled for 9 p.m. Um, at 5 p.m., I get a message from him saying, hey, can you meet me at the airport in 45 minutes? And I was, you know, kind of surprised. I was like, um, no, actually I can't because one, I already told you I live, you know, over an hour away in traffic, you know, and that's 5 p.m. So trying to get to LAX at 5 p.m. is just insane from where I live. So, you know, you're looking at at least an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes to get to LAX. Um, so I let him know, hey, you know what? I I cannot meet you there in 45 minutes. One, I live way further than that. So even if I left now, that wouldn't work. And two, actually I had other rentals scheduled between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. till his rental was up. And he had given me no prior notice. So um, I let him know, I was like, you know what, I can't be there by then. Obviously you didn't give me any prior notice. However, not to worry because there is an LAX tour lot. It's super easy. It's only about half a mile down the road from where LAX is. They'll provide you transportation back to LAX. So all you have to do is go drop it off there. And that also sucks for me because I'm the one that incurs the LAX tour lot fee for having him drop it off there. But you know, there's nothing I can do in that situation. So I offered that solution to him and he did not like that. Um, he wanted the car to be picked up curbside, but you know, I let him know, hey, I'm sorry, there's literally nothing I can do in this situation. Um, and then after that, I just didn't hear anything back from him. He never even confirmed that he was gonna drop the car off at the lot um, until I got the checkout notice from Turo saying, hey, your guest has dropped off the car. So I was like, okay, it's there. At least I know that he dropped off the car. Um, and then finally, a few hours later, around nine o'clock, I arrived at the Turo lot to grab my car. Um, come to find out that my car was in pretty bad condition in comparison to how I gave it to him. Um, there is a ton of trash in there. Um, and then the biggest thing was that I found weed in there I found cigars lighters so obvious signs of smoking aside from just the odor that you can so obviously smell so you know at that point whenever something like that happens I mean automatically I have to charge these people a cleaning fee because I need to get my car cleaned I got to get that odor out of the car and make sure that you know there's no weed lying around anywhere in the car get it properly clean um, and then so whenever you see something like that happen pictures are so important so the good thing with this was that because he checked out at the tour lot the tour lot had their own copy of images that they took and then once I got there I took more detailed photos as well um, then I proceeded to uh, contact Turo so whenever you want to file for a cleaning fee you just email I believe it's support at Turo.com and you let them know hey this is a reservation number this is why I want a cleaning fee and here's the evidence so I went ahead and did that um, and then once you file that claim with Turo, they will automatically contact the guest and let them know, hey, you know, um, we're investigating a cleaning fee. I'm assuming that this is what the message says somewhere along those lines that, um, you know, the car was not brought back in the condition in which you received it. So therefore there will be a cleaning fee associated with this trip. Um, so he must have gotten that email and he messaged me right away. Um, just throwing a fit about it saying that oh you know the car wasn't that bad and I'm just exaggerating and that they didn't smoke in the car and I was like okay dude uh, all you have to do is look at the trip photos obviously this is not just coming from me because you returned it at the tour a lot so they're providing evidence as well so I actually have two forms of ev evidence myself and the tour a lot um, you know there's obviously weed in the car and cigars in the car so you know there was just I mean it was just so blatantly obvious that this guy was wasting his breath and then he just basically proceeded to tell me that oh it wasn't a big deal and I can just vacuum everything up literally these are his messages to me that I could just vacuum everything up and it should be fine I was like okay well I'm pretty sure I can't vacuum up the odor from weed in my car um, Anyways, at that point, you know, Turo can also see the messages. So um, Turo messaged me just saying, hey, you know what? Don't worry about communicating with this renter. We'll handle it from here. Um, you know, obviously he's kind of being a problem. So just ignore him. So Turo was really great. You know, obviously they, they always make sure that they investigate the claim and that, you know, it makes sense from the host end and that, you know, we're not trying to rip anyone off. So obviously from the photos that were provided, it was 
evident that, you know, there was smoking in the car, there was odor in the car. Um, myself and the tour a lot provided that evidence. And so that was ruled in my favor. Um, and then immediately after I saw that the cleaning fee had gone through, I saw that um, I got an email notification saying, oh, the guest has left your review. So the way it works is if your guest leaves a review before you leave them a review, you get a notification saying, hey, so-and-so just left you a review. When you get a chance, don't forget to leave them a review as well. You cannot see the review until you leave them a review. So Turo doesn't make the reviews visible until both parties have left the review or until that time period where you can leave a review is up. So they allot you 10 days to leave your renter a review. Um, and it's kind of easy, nice and easy because on the app you can see the countdown of how much time you have left for them to leave your review. So when I got the notification that he left me a review, I already knew it was going to be bad. I mean, I can already tell from the conversation I had from this guy and the way that he was acting and the fact that he left me the review right after the cleaning fee was processed. I knew it wasn't gonna be good. So here's the strategy that I use. For one, I know that you know this guy, he did this out of spite and to kind of get back at me and I've never had an issue before. So what I did was, um, you get 10 days to leave them a review, right? So I waited till the very, very last minute to leave him a review. So I waited almost a full 10 days. The good thing for me was that that 10th day landed on, I think, a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And for me, I know that Tuesdays and Wednesdays are kind of slow days for my profile. I know that there's not a ton of people looking at my profile. So that was good because once that review does show, I don't want a whole lot of people looking at that review. The second reason why I waited that long was also because... Um, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had other rentals in between and that the people renting for me in between that time frame were leaving me reviews so that when this guy's reviews did publish, it would be further down the line. Because when they do uh, publish the reviews, it goes in order in which the rentals came in. So the nice thing was that when his review finally published, I had about you know 10 other reviews that came after him. So he was already pushed down to the bottom, right? So if anyone did even go to my profile unless they were digging through my reviews they would not immediately see that so that was good too then the next thing that I did was um, when I knew that I only had about an hour left to leave him a review um, what I did was I prepped my message to dispute his review uh, to Turo support team the email so I already got it all ready and I actually emailed them first because I know it usually takes them at least a couple of hours if not a day to get back to you based on how busy they are so I sent them the email first so that it could already be in queue because I knew by the time they looked at it that the review would be pu published. So I sent them the email, then I went back and I left the review for that guy and then once I left him the review I saw that his review published on my profile. Then literally probably about two hours later um, Turo got back to me and said, that they reviewed the situation and of course it was clear that you know this review was unfair and not accurate as to what happened so that they went ahead and re removed the review so you know I wanted to make sure that whatever this review was that he did leave for me which was a bad review and it was a one-star review had as little impact on my profile as possible and literally I'm pretty sure no one saw that review on my profile because it was just there for such a short amount of time so you know I think being so strategic about how I handled it had very little impact on my profile so and that's also the other thing that I really like about Turo is that they're really great about looking into these situations and you know being fair about it um, you know all they had to do was review the communication that went on during the trip look at the timestamps look at the photos and they knew that it was clear as day that this renter was in the wrong and they immediately took off that review so that was really nice so this is the first time I've dealt with anything like that and that's how I did it and you know, I would definitely recommend using this strategy because it worked out really well for me. So hope this helps you guys out. And again, I cannot stress enough, take lots and lots of photos on your check-ins and your check-outs. Get detailed photos. And I'll be posting a video shortly of how I do my check-ins and check-outs, um, how I take my photos, how detailed I get. Um, so hopefully you guys can use that for your rentals as well. Thanks again, guys.